Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. And today I'm very excited because we have Eric Ebron, and he is here today. He is a leadership consultant, and he is also, he has his own podcast on our show. So look for his podcast. He's part of our podcast community, and he has his episodes that you could just go back to and listen to. They're very exciting, very knowledgeable, and has a lot of different tools and strategies you can use to improve your overall life. Now today, Eric's going to be talking about transitions, and I'm going to let him tell you what he means by different types of transition in in your life and how you could easily transition from one extreme to the next, and he's going to show you how today. So Eric, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show. I'm so excited. I love when you come on. You know, tell everybody, you know, briefly a little about yourself, what you do, and let's learn a little about transitioning and how people can actually easily go from one extremity to the next. Excellent, Stacy. Good to see you again. You know, I I'm excited for for today. So, uh, for the listeners, Eric Ebron, I'm a leadership consultant. Uh, you know, I've I've been around uh, a while in the sense that uh, ten year Marine Corps veteran. Uh, I've gone from being in an entrepreneurial space, well, currently entrepreneurial space, but from small business uh, where there were less than 40 people making X amount of dollars. And, and as I mentioned before, you know, the, the CEO or founder, I have lunch with the guy every two weeks. So you go from that to actually being, you know, in a large conglomerate, a corporate aerospace giant where 68, 75,000 people worldwide and then when you happen to see the CEO, it's almost a monumental moment, right? You're you're in the same conference room with this guy and, and you're looking and you're saying, you know, he was just on Bloomberg, you know, two days ago. Again, mm-hmm. one extreme to the other. And, and yeah. I think for, for some, we need to look at navigating what that looks like. So the older you get, the more opportunities you have to experience right. life. Yes. When you're younger, life comes at you, but you may not see it. You may not see your growth. You you know, you think everything is going too slow, but if you slow down and realize that we're in transitions, almost always find those moments where plateauing is not a bad thing. It gives you an opportunity to breathe, to recognize Mm -hmm. that you've grown, gives you a chance to see what it is you you're missing and then get ready for the next area. So I think that's, that's kind of what I want to help focus on is the various transitory moments we have in life from the military to civilian world, from small business to large, huge conglomerates. And then in my particular case, I'm gonna wanna chat with you and pick your brain is transitioning out of this corporate world, you know, to some of this entrepreneurial uh, landscape, which some people I'm sure listening are, 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 they're excited for that. And for me, I am equally excited, but I'm a novice. And so picking your brain also during that time, I think would be be very interesting. I'd love for you to pick my brain. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so I'm sorry. So, so there was a, there was a moment when I was younger that I was in the military. And again, I mentioned between 17 and 19 is a great time to get these, these, these personnel. And when you get them, the military is very formative in what they're going to do moving forward. It gets ingrained in them. So the transition out of that is so difficult. Do, 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 and I'll talk, chat about that for a moment, but do, do you have a moment going back early in your life when something was so ingrained in you and then you found out later that we're going to have to, we're going to have to change that thinking? Well, you know, I got to tell you, I was a reporter for a veterans magazine and that's when I realized, you know, transition, you know, uh, was such a, 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 it was such a hard thing for people to do. Like, you know, when I was young, I was still in that naive stage. I still didn't really know a lot. And when I started to interview military officers and they had finished, you know, uh, their time in the military and then they came to civilian world, It was like two different worlds for them. They also, a lot of them had a lot of issues because they were trained a certain way. They were trained to do certain things and they were very disciplined. Some of them, then when they went away to Iraq and Iran and they, and they, they did their tours, you know, they came back and they had a lot of issues that they had to overcome psychologically because it was a very traumatic time for them. And so when they came back, they had some mental health issues they needed to deal with. They had a different world that they had to approach. 
And sure, they were, they had a lot of tools, a lot of them, you know, they were trained and they could do a lot of things in a lot of different areas, but civilian, civilian life, it's like, it's like black and white. And they didn't know how to make that transition. So transitioning can be a very good thing because as soon as they understood and they had they got the help they needed to transition, they were able to use those tools to create careers of them their own and have families. But what I've noticed is that when you transition, you have to. There's a lot involved to make a, a positive transition. Like for the, I'll, I'll I'll say for the military officers, they needed help with their mental health issues. What you know, what they went through, they needed to to learn how to overcome it. They needed to learn how to take those tools and actually put them to usage in the civilian life. And so they needed guidance, they needed help. And what on, you know, and so to me, transitioning, you you can't do it on your own. There are people that think that they could dive into new things and they're gonna be a success in a short period of time, especially in this generation, because everybody has no patience. They want things now. But a positive transition takes time, it takes support, it takes guidance from people who have been there, done it, and know how to do it well. And so there's a lot involved with a transition. And, you know, for me, when I transitioned from one, one area of my life to the next area, it took time and it took, it took guidance. I always had to look at the people above me that were doing better than me and actually, you know, get ideas and support from them to actually do it the right way. Because if you don't, you're going to end up making mistakes. And do you really want to have to learn from your mistakes or do you want to learn from people who've been through it that could help you have a smooth transition? You know, you, you said it best uh, about the guidance factor. So so in the in the military, and then I think this, this will sum this up, uh, you know, in, in the military, you're more or less told, right? And which is really fine. You know, when you're, when you're that young, you need guidance anyway. So you're told, how to do this, when to do this, what to do it. And sometimes you're told why, uh, sometimes. <laughs> the whole point though, is that when you get used to that level of structure and everything, and even when you don't think it's there, it's it's there. Then mm -hmm. when you transition out of the military into civilian life, finding out, now this is gonna be crazy, finding out that, you know what? You probably should schedule a dentist. Right? Mm -hmm. You would have never... Finding out that you can do that is is something that doesn't even enter their mind, right? It, and it's not just that you're young. It's in the military, you do get dental care, but they tell you, like, you'll, you, you'll come to work and at 9 a.m. and they'll say, hey, show me, you know, go see the dentist. And you're like, <laughs> okay, fine. It wasn't a schedule, right? It wasn't a preparation. You didn't, right. have, you just go. Well, in the civilian world, you really have to monitor what goes on. You have to, you have to say, do I need life insurance? Right. And, and is it a good thing in the military? It's something you would have signed. You wouldn't even known that you had it. Right. And so that transition from the military to civilian is very important. Guidance is so important. And in the regular life that we live, a lot of people take it for granted when you move from such a structured environment to one that. And by the way, I, I never call real life unstructured. Real mm -hmm. life is real life. Right. It yeah. is it is unfettered chaos. It, but that's what <laughs> life is. <laughs> that's what military is. What's what's manufactured right? and yeah. it's in a good way. But um, and by the way, again, 10 year Marine Corps veteran, love the Marines, love the military. But regular life is not as structured. It's not made to be that way. It, and so the adjustment is, is very rough. I have um, uh, in the consulting space. Uh, I have consulted and, and coached a few retired military personnel and, and said, listen, that's not going to work. You know, mm -hmm. well, I, that's not going to work. And they'll look at me and they, I've, I've led, you know, 800 men and I've had $65 million discs and I, I, I got you. Not going to work in a regular world. Not yeah. the civilian world in the regular world. Right? You're, mm -hmm. you're, in the regular world is not a structure. You need to find where that looks. You need to be more creative and see, that's something that also in the military, uh, the creativity is not as there because it doesn't have to be, right? So right. someone else already made what's supposed to be creative, told you how to do it, and then your creativity is based on the framework that's drawn into a technical manual. So right. in regular life, we really need to, you know, say to ourselves, okay, I've transitioned from this. What do I need to do? Right? Guidance. What do I need to learn? And and this is something before we move on. How long is it going to take? 
Yeah. I think the most successful people give themselves a time frame that that is doable, but they may not know. So finding that mentor, finding that consultant, finding that guidance person who's going to say, you know, this is going to take six months, probably a year. And, and yeah. even if they don't understand it, trust the process because you have to transition correctly to be able to get to the next spot. Right. Exactly. So true. So true. And I, I think, you know, transition can be a wonderful thing. I think a lot of people, though, are afraid of it. You know, um, I see when I speak to a lot of people, you know, you have your go-getters and then you have people that have so much potential, but the fear factor gets in the way and they are afraid of the failure. But to me, I, I feel like that there is no such thing as failure. We might not always reach the, the, the common goal that we have set in our mind, but as long as you try you know, I don't see failure in, in, in that space at all. I think, you know, you had the courage to try and you did your best and this is the outcome. Now let's learn from it and let's set another goal so you can get to the next spot where you can get closer to that ultimate goal that you have set in your mind. The power, I'm sure someone wrote a book or had a conversation. The power of failure is monumental, right? So one of my coaching pieces I talk about is doing a you have to perform a failure analysis, right? You have to look and say to yourself, hey, what didn't work? Not just, not, don't focus on it. You don't get, don't, don't fall into the the, the, the the bubble, right? But yeah. what didn't work? So I don't repeat this. You know, what is my personality that doesn't work well with this team, you know? And so I can kind of adjust and, and slightly move. You know, when we talk about the, the um, what doesn't work, I, I there's this other transitory period that I had in my life, which was moving from a small business. So I worked for a company that did really well. I knew the owner, uh, you know, uh, I thrived, ended up becoming the operations manager of a small company, which was excellent. Um, that level of creativity was monumental in the sense that it's so small and nimble, right? That you, you, you're not, you have time to fail, right? You can come up with an idea, because, you know, the, the owner's right there, next office. Hey, yeah, Eric, try it. And you try it. And what you're trying is only, you know, something that's going to last three or four days or the amount of right. money and the expense is not great. And most of the time it works because of the level of nimbleness that a small company can afford you, right? Um, and then you're like, hey, that, that, that works. Well, when you transition to a large company, you yeah. say, hey, I have an idea. And they say, okay, great. And you say it and they go, no, that, there's no way regulation is going to let you do that. What are you, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> we, right? the, the FAA would shut you down in a, in, in, in a minute. And you're like, you know, why, am I, why am I hitting these roadblocks? Well, you didn't yeah. transition well from the, the mindset necessary to be very nimble and creative in, in a smaller space, which works great, to yeah. the, the, the discipline necessary in a conglom mm -hmm. in conglomerate, right? We have shareholders, we have regulations, we have, you know, there's business we're doing that's cross country. You can't just, can't just share a blueprint over, you know, and you're like, oh, yeah. but they're already buying our stuff. Yeah, but that country is on the watch list. They can buy our stuff, but they can't see the blueprints. And you're like, okay, fine. There's a lot of other things that you need to know to transition correctly. And, right. and I think the importance there is, is understated when when people um, are looking for jobs in, in larger corporations. And, and I know it's hard to put it there, but for you, have you seen moments where something was very creative and you had that nimbleness, like again, as an entrepreneur or working for a smaller, and then you get to a larger and you realize it seems like your hands are, are tied? Oh yeah, there was, there was moments where I would always get compliments on my writing and how well I did. And then when I was writing and I did a piece for Jack Canfield and for one of his Chicken Soup for the Soul books, you know, what the, the, the main editor loved it, but she sent it back to me numerous times. She's like, I know you could do better, you know, rewrite it again. And then, you know, because it had to go through a process of eight editors. So she wanted to give them the best version of me. And she goes, don't take it offensively, but redo it again, redo it again, redo it again. And she's like, I know you could do better. And then, so finally I got it to the point where she was happy with it. And then she went and she got it published in their book. And, 
but you know, it took seven times, but in that seven times, I got to tell you, I learned a lot. It actually, you know, because I didn't, I took it as constructive criticism and I didn't take it personally. I actually understood what real writers you know, are you know what what the, the the higher end is looking for? How a real writer is supposed to write? You know, you're not just writing to give information. There is a way to write to capture the audience's eye, to draw them in, and that's what they were looking for me to do. They wanted me to draw the reader in. So I learned from it instead of only because I didn't take it personally. I right. took it in a constructive manner. Stacy, that is that is powerful. Uh, because sometimes we 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 reach a level, right? You're not here, you're not here, you're not here. You reach the level of of accolades. The people around you, loved ones, friends, uh, peers, colleagues, help reinforce that you're at a level that you can walk around and say, you know, I have five books, I have ten books under my belt. And then you know you get this opportunity that you you have to adjust, and the adjustment. There's growth in there that you didn't know you had had to, had to perform. And yeah. now that you've exercised that, you are ready to help share, just like you shared the story with your audience now. You're ready to share that, hey, this is great for this audience, or this is great for this level. Is is that where you're where you're wanting to go? Uh, there was an opportunity I had um with a, with a gentleman, and he was trying to get some place in a leadership level. And I said, great. And um, I would say to him, are you trying to go here? Because it sounds like you're trying to go here. He goes, no, no, I want, I want to go at this spot. I go, okay, well, we can work on getting you there. But right now, I'm just letting you know, 95% of what you're doing is, is just for this level. And he says, I really, and I said, come by next week, we'll, we'll have the conversation. And so I had to then show him the difference between the level, right? And which allowed him to see that okay, here is the course to transition to that next deal. You, you can you can be a junior leader all day long, which sounds good if that's what you want to be. Great, but to get yeah. to senior level or to get to director or to get to executive director, there are different modes of thinking, understanding, ways that you have to just speak. Right, what what is allowed and what's not allowed. I know yes. we have the freedom of thought and freedom of speech. The higher you go, the less. <laughs> the more creative you have to be in, in how you're saying it, right? And so mm -hmm. teaching that transitory state is very important, I think, for those that are consultants or those that consider themselves leaders of some sort. Uh, and it, it's it very important because it, if not, some of those changes that you're going to feel in that feels like an attack, like you said, right? Feels like mm -hmm. it's an attack. It feels like, is this worth it? You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm at a level of success already. So it makes you question whether you are comfortable where you are. You know, if you make six figures, great. There comes a time that you're going to have to convert to say what seven figures look like or high six yeah. figures look like. And it's yeah. not the same, right? What, what got you here may not be what's going to get you to the next spot. You have to transition. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I, you know, it, it, if you really have high dreams and you really like, you really want to go to a different, you want to transition to the next level, you know, there's going to be different expectations. There's going to be, like you said, different um, things are going to be done differently. You know, it might be fine for this level, but it's not going to be fine for the next level. And you have to be open to it. And you also have to admit, you do your research ahead of time. If you want to transition, maybe a good idea would be to start researching and looking how that other group that other level is doing things and compare it to what you're doing and see the difference and maybe learn from it and maybe start seeing how you could tweak yourself a little bit to get to that level because once you start writing on that level or you start doing things differently on that level or you start directing people or speaking to people on a certain level it makes a big difference and uh, you know it, it's just a huge difference you know I'll share something again. You, you you say the things that help capture, you know, when something happened in my life and, and I just couldn't put it to words. Uh, you know, I had a couple of interviews with um, ex some executive directors who, by the way, two of them are now presidents of full divisions of, of aerospace, right? They're, 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 their portfolio is huge. 
But I remember right. sitting on, on, on an interview with, with them and saying to myself, you know, what, I, I don't, I don't think I'm coming across or I'm, I'm yeah. missing, I'm missing something. After right. the interview, I, I, I sat and talked with, you know, one of the senior directors and he says, uh, he says, oh, how, how did it go? You know, I had a whole suite of, of interviews and this person was the last one. He was the vice president of a division. Again, now he's full president, but how did it go? And I said, you know, I, I don't think I, I don't think I connected with that guy. You know, normally I can connect. <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong. You, you 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 have to have the substance to back it up. It's not just whether you have charisma. You have to have the right. subs, substance, background, education. And I said, I don't think I connected with him. And he says, uh, you know, Eric, I've worked for this guy for 12 years. I go to lunch with him. I've followed him from a couple of divisions. Uh, I'm sure he doesn't know any of the names of my kids. And we've been together for 12 years. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and he goes, it's, it's not you, but sometimes when you get in certain arenas, it's it's how you perform, what you bring to the table, and whether they can see that you are ready for that best spot. That's it. Right. Everything yeah. else, fine, we can handle that later. But right now, those are the things. And I was like, wow. And, and of course, until then, I felt myself fairly competent. Right, fairly successful in in this aerospace world, and then I get into this area here where oh, wait, hold on, it's it's no no th these are the three things that are as important, more important than the other ten that you can bring to the table. So that right. that transition for me um, really elevated my ability to speak in certain formats, you know, certain um, uh, arenas that that wasn't available before, and That's yes. There were disappointing times during that. There, there were times that, you know, on a Sunday, I'm rubbing my head. I'm going, I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to be in this. And, you know, I, I'm speaking with these executive directors and, and I see their face with disappointed with what I'm saying. And I'm going, no one has ever been disappointed with me saying something like that. And I'm going, oh, so you're right. You have to put in the work to get to yeah. that next level, right? It's, it's the onus is you. It's not the company. It's not those, the onus is you. And I think that's very important for, for transition. It makes you wonder, do I want this? Yes. Right? And it brings to that fact, what I think is very important. And I, I think a lot of people, you know, they see the glory, but they don't understand what's behind the scenes. Yeah. A lot of times people, they, they see all these things and, oh, I'd love to do that. But then they don't realize what you have to do to actually get to that level. And there are right. many times. Yeah, I would have to, you know, yeah, I would do endless hours of, of work. And then I would, I would, you know, do research and, and see what, you know, what that person's doing, what that group of people are doing, what that, you know, company is doing, you know, how are they doing it, you know, what, and then compare it to my work. And I had to be honest, because sometimes we don't like to look at the flaws of ourselves. But if you're going to transition, you have to accept that you, 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 you come with flaws. Everybody has flaws. And, you know, your, your certain areas might not be up to potential and you're going to have to work on them. But, you know, sometimes that's hard for people to do. Some people don't like to admit to their flaws or they don't like to, you know, admit that, you know, hey, I might not be great at this. And if you're not great at this, maybe, you know, you know, take that that ego down a couple of notches and find somebody that, you know, in that field that is good at it and ask them for help and ask them to teach you, you know, and, and, you know, that's hard for people. You know, I, I, I would say to uh, some people, and this is part of introspection at one point in time. Well, even now, what skills are transferable? Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so again, you're, you're, you're moving from one level to the next transition, you're hitting a next plateau and you're like, here you are, right. You've been hiking and, and now you have this gear and this gear and this gear. And then you say, okay, great. And now you had an area to actually ask yourself, is any of this still needed to yes. go to the next level? Because you, you might find there are things you need to do, but there are mm -hmm. things that you don't need to bring along with you. Right? Yes. It helped get you here, but it's nothing to take for it. And so it's like what you said, ego. When you're, when you're younger, sometimes having a, a measure of confidence, right? Executive presence, right? You see my face, and executive <laughs> presence, right? Everyone looks for that when, you, when you're younger or... or earlier in your career they look to see yeah. can they sit around the boardroom with you and you not fiddle around with a phone or look like you're bored 
Yes. So that's where executive presence comes in. But the higher you go, we already know you should have that. Yes. Right? So so as much as you walk into a room with a measure of confidence, now you kind of look silly and look overly arrogant. You're, you look like you're bringing in a ton of ego. Everyone <laughs> in here has executive presence. So if, if yes. you're focusing on that, now your ego is too high. Yeah. But there was a time they had to learn that, right? There, there was a mistake or two that they may have had to make. Or yeah. if they had a good mentor, they would have helped have those conversations and say, hey, what how did the how did the room feel? What yeah. did you see? What did you miss? You know, mm -hmm. when when they looked at you or when they spoke to you, what and then a mentor can help draw out that you may have been exhibiting some skills that are not transferable into that next next arena. And I think that's that's important to also teach. You know, you were talking about uh, networking uh, earlier and and the importance of that. Um, I want to I want to just kind of tag along with um, networking at a business mm -hmm. is learning. You know, having peers, learning who else does what you do or who can help get you at another spot, but only like one or two levels. Yeah, how important is networking in the entrepreneurial space to really move you to the next level? I think networking is extremely important because you know somebody you meet somebody they like you or they like what you do and they think you you're you have you know uh, potential to do you know to help them or to help another person and word of mouth starts and they say I you got to meet this person this person's really great I think they would be a great asset for you you talk to the person and they like you and then all of a sudden you introduce them to somebody else or they introduce you to another person and before you know it you're 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 networking with a whole group of people from all different areas and as an entrepreneur you have to branch out you, you there's okay. lots of different areas so you're kind of like the trunk and you know if you want to be a successful entrepreneur you have to have a lot of branches and to build those branches you're going to have to network out and you know because you can't as an entrepreneur do everything by yourself and they, you know, you want to grasp people that are really higher up than you that can actually help pull you along or kind of like water your seeds so that tr yeah, that yeah. tree kind of grows, you know, bigger and stronger. And, you know, and 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 that's how it really works. And then once you you start getting all these, you start networking, you know, word of mouth and referrals and and being able, you know, and 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 customers too, you know, like the whole the whole thing is all interesting twined you know and bet between referrals for doing such a great job between meeting people and those people introducing you to other people you could have a very prosperous business as an mm -hmm. entrepreneur it's just but but networking and connections is is really that's the most important thing and, and a lot of times people don't realize that especially when you come out of college and you're young mm -hmm. you know but if you really want to get places in our society you know you really have to network meet people get yourself out there you know, go to conventions or go to different things where different people are going to be and start meeting people and seeing how you could help them and they could help you. You know, again, thank you for that. I, uh, as, as one that's transitioned from that corporate world to this entrepreneurial space, sometimes in my particular case, um, you know, every transition has seemed higher and higher and higher. So that's that's kind of a forward or an upward momentum transition in, in a certain space. And then I I felt, you know, pure honesty, I felt that this transition has not just not just been it's been more of a <laughs> more of a more of a decline, right? Just because you can take care of yourself financially for a measure of time doesn't mean that which which gave you the energy and spurred you on and, and gave you that purpose and reason every morning to wake up, that changed for me, right? So in a corporate space, right, those purposes and reasons were, were different. I, yeah. I, I trained myself to be different. And by the way, each one of those transitory periods in my life, military, civilian, mm -hmm. you know, small business to large, uh, you know, junior leader to senior leader, all of those had different purposes for me to help drive and give me that motivation. I, I'm I'm a I'm a purpose driven guy, right? That's uh yeah, again, Marine Corps, right? You show me a hill, tell me what you want to do with it. 
So here I am now in in entrepreneurial space, and that transition has been shaky. I don't talk about it much, but it's been shaky in the sense that the, the purpose now has to come within, and the drive is there, the energy is there. I'm willing to do it, but I don't know enough to to see a hill. Right? I don't I, I don't know enough to know what what pieces of valley are there. I'm learning, right? I, and this I'm speaking with you, others, mentors, networking. I'm I'm learning daily and and that's how piecing together right that 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 not just the drive but what's ahead to help guide my compass like, right um, other than that I just see people doing things and I go oh that sounds great I don't know how they got it I don't know how they got there I don't know what it takes I network and then someone would say something so monumental and it's so simple J just yeah. like you mentioned earlier which I think is great for the audience to hear which is, hey guys, you, it's it's branches, right? And then sometimes you're gonna find some of those branches were, were small, but it helped build yeah. this this bigger deal and working mm -hmm. towards that. So so thank you for for sharing that. You know, one other piece I wanted to sh talk about just and, and and I think that will help is kind of self belief because yeah. that's right now I, I've always compared myself. People say you shouldn't do it, but I've always compared myself. In my level of confidence to what what's what people are looking for, what the mission is looking for, what the company is looking for. And again, in this space here, my self-confidence is high, but for what? Right? Mm -hmm. What do I want? What's yeah. next? What the, does the horizon hold? For you, do you have these these what I don't need to know what? But do you have these things that are still ahead of you that you're going, okay, here's here's the accomplishments. Here's what the last 15 years looked like, right? I have the books, I have the presents, I've, I've had the media. Okay, here's one or two things still ahead. Or is it still plateau maintenance for you? I create a trajectory. So I create a plan. Where do I want to be in three months? Where do I want to be in six months? Where do I want to be in nine months? Where do I want to be in 12 months from now? And where do I want to be in the following year? And that that plan consistently changes according to what's happening in my current space. So, you know, I could I could be here, but I have a plan. So I'm sticking to the, the pathway that I'm on. But at any time, there could be a detour. If something better comes along, then I'm going to add that to the plan and figure out a way where I can incorporate it, where everything will flow nicely. So there's no, there's nothing set in stone when you're an entrepreneur, but you have to have an idea of, you know, what, what you want to accomplish. And so you have an idea of what you need to create in order to meet those accomplishments. And so doing that, it has been very successful in, in my career. And also, like how you mentioned earlier, you know, when we talked about connections and networking, also being a little bit of a, um, aggressive. Now, like a lot of people have self-doubt and that's what holds people back. It's breaking through that self-doubt and realizing that you have something that nobody else has. You have the knowledge to make something happen that is going to, you know, that someone else doesn't have that knowledge yet. You can make them better. And so therefore you have the upper hand. So, you know, as you want to grow, you know, you know, you reach out and you ask people for, you know, for if, if they want to do your services, let's say, or if they want to do this. And the worst thing they could say is no. And then there are people out there that I knew I could probably benefit from. So what did I do as a reporter? I looked up their information and I found their contact and I contacted them. Right. Now, the worst thing they could do is hang up the phone, you know, <laughs> so, yeah. you know. I would call them, introduce myself. I would, you know, explain who I was and, you know, why I was interested in calling them. And, you know, and then either the conversation goes nowhere or it goes somewhere. And I would say 99% of the time it went somewhere. So, you know, but if I didn't have the courage to pick up the phone and to call this person that I didn't know, I just saw them maybe on a podcast or I saw them on an article, you know, and I wanted, I thought they, they could be a benefit in my career. Let me see if I could contact them and, and I could see what I could do for them or they could do for me. 
And, you know, if you have to have that mentality and sometimes like we were talking about, sometimes you just got to push someone on the stage. Well, sometimes you just got to just, you know, take a chance and go with it and go with what your gut says, because I think your gut is never wrong. Your inner instincts. I, I like that. I like that, Stacey. Um, you know, I, I, I would like to probably finish this up. I, I think this is good, but finish this up that, you know, there were there were times at each point prior and after transition where th there was a, like a a story. So I'm a story guy. Right? And so I, I remember, um, you know, I, I may have told this this story here, but, you know, there was a time that I, I knew I was going somewhere and I knew, it doesn't mean I downplay where I am. It's just I know I'm going yeah. somewhere. And there was a group of, of people around me and they were having a conversation on who's next. And again, mm -hmm. I may have shared this, but, um, you know, so they were, they were saying, Hey, when this person leaves and this person is going to be next. And then when this person retire and this is going to, it's going to go here and then she's going to go over here. And they had it whole in 30 minutes. They had the whole place mapped out for the next three years. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working. And then one of them looked over and says, uh, so Eric, you know, wh where are you? And I said, uh, and I was half listening. I said, what do you mean? They said, oh, and they reiterated when this person leaves, this person moves up. They said, where are you? And I said, uh, I said, yeah, I don't, I don't wait in line. <laughs> and, and half of them immediately like, got offended, right? Because again, there's a measure of, um, there's a measure of confidence I think you need to have. So someone, I was in a, I was in a summit and someone says to me, Eric, you have enough self-love to make the statement, right? Mm -hmm. I care about yourself. And I explained to them and I said, it's, it's no slight on anyone, but if, if my movement is dependent on six or seven other people doing something else in their lives, yeah. then I might as well not have a goal because right. I'm waiting on seven other people to accomplish their goals. And I don't even know them. And, they yeah. kind of, and remarkably, Stacy, maybe 18 months passed and I was everyone's boss. Mm -hmm. right? So the plan that they developed of 10 people moving like chess pieces yes. was immediately trumped by me being everyone's boss. And I wasn't in the list, you know, 18 months later. And, <laughs> and I remember... Uh, I'm sitting there and working. I'm drinking from a fire hose, right? Because, because again, I, I transitioned to this next deal. Yeah. And one of the guys walked past my office one day and he just knocked. And I look up and he says, you don't wait in line, huh? <laughs> right? And I sat back and I said, I don't wait in line. Mm -hmm. So a, he remembered it. It was great. And it was a great callback moment to, to something that was really small, Right, you know, a year and a half before. But if you don't have that inner motivation, inner confidence, like inner compass to what it is you do want, uh, you, yeah. you may, you, you'll never, not only never reach it, you'll never transition out of where you are, which it takes a lot of work to transition out of the military to be a successful civilian. It takes a lot of work to transition out of a small business mindset, the creativity, the nimbleness to one of more structure right? And more processing in a, in a large organization. And it takes yeah. a lot of courage to transition out of a corporate world of a certain salary to say, you know, I think I'm going to start something on my own and go from zero and see what that looks like. But yeah. it takes a lot of courage and you have to have that focus to transition correctly. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now you have a best-selling book that just recently got launched and hit the bestsellers list right away. I want to know a little bit more about that book. Can you tell us about it? Yes, thank, thank you, Stacey. I'm hoping this shows up here. Highway to Skyway uh, Leadership. And it says charting a course. You know, I, I, I wrote this uh, because I, I really wanted uh, to pour out of me what I felt was really necessary in the last 10 years to transition from regular Joe and, and you know, to uh, a director in an aerospace company in, in a matter of you know six, seven years. Um, yeah. And it, it follows a system, it's kind of like my method, but it follows a system that puts leadership in your hands. Right. Many people wait for someone to say, hey, you're ready. We, we watch these movies where someone looks at you and say, you're ready, kid. <laughs> sometimes, 
if, if you wait long enough, no one's going to say that to you. And right. many years are going to go past or many things are going to pass. So somewhere along the way, you got to dig deep and say, what is it going to take? Am I ready? What's necessary? Is there a method? Can someone help tell me what I need to do? Just me, regardless yeah. of the business, regardless of the company. Is there something I can do to get ready for that next position? And that's where, um, you know, highway to skyway leadership comes in. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it. Um, I, you know, I was telling my wife, you know, I, I've written a couple other books, which are great, but this one is is the, the crowning jewel so far for me, you know, and, and yeah. uh, I look at it. I'm, I'm sending a couple out, you know, overseas, you know, a guy from Switzerland and a person mm -hmm. there like, hey, let me, let me get your book. So I'm, I'm I'm so psyched, you know, they can, of course, go to go to Amazon.com, Highway, the Skyway Leadership, but um, I, I'm I'm super excited. So thank thank you for that opportunity. Uh, and as I mentioned before, you know, if I get a couple more that I'm super proud of, I'll, I'll be stoked. I'm sure we'll be talking in the future. And I'm, I guarantee you, you'll have a, a couple more on underneath your belt. Definitely. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Stacey. Thank you very much. Now, if before we go, if we had to take our whole conversation and you wanted to emphasize on some important factors, what would be a couple of things you'd like to emphasize to the listeners? You know, if I can sum up like some, some points, it, it would be, is who I am now and the skills that I've attained going to make it to the next level? And you have to do a calling. You may have to cut off some of those, but you definitely have to say, what do I need to know to be there? That's right. one. Two, adaptability and being flexible. Right? Mm -hmm. The terrain that you're going to enter, you can do a lot of research, which you should, but you have to be adaptable to understand that the confidence that you had is going to be tested. Right? The yeah. knowledge that you had is going to be tested. The confidence that you had is going to be tested, but you have to be adaptable and flexible for that next level. And then I would say last, you have to prepare and bring networking into the, in, into the realm. Um, yeah. your, your, your peers understand that there's a whole new group of people you need to reach out to and learn from, and they're willing to help support you there. So, you know, I've, I've met those people that say, hey, but these are my buddies. Uh, we all can go together. You all may not go together, right? You, there's a yeah. group of people you have to meet. For me, it's meeting you and others like you to help get me to that next level. And likewise, for me to help be a, be a resource. So it's not, you know, it's not this piece where I want to just hang on, you know, Stacey Chilamy's coattails. No, I, I think, you know, your audience may listen and, and someone may say, hey, I, I, I gravitate to this guy. You know, I'm, I'm a ex-military person did 20 years here and there. Um, you know, he, he's speaking my language. Uh, right. And and that's what I'm looking for as well as being a help. So I think that would sum up this, this conversation. And trans transition isn't easy, uh, but for those who want to grow, it's necessary. I mean, yeah. it's necessary. And mm -hmm. in doing that, you got to do what's what's necessary to be necessary. You, you got to be yeah. adaptable. You got to be flexible. You got to work on networking and you got to say to yourself, that which got me here may not be the thing that's going to get me there. Right. Exactly. And that's such an important quote because, you know, a lot of people get stuck where they think what worked for me 20 years ago is going to work for me now. And they don't realize in our change in society, change is consistent and you can't, you can't, you know, uh, kind of put all your cookies in, in one in a basket yeah. and you just think that, oh, you know, this worked for me a couple of years ago. It's going to, it's going to be fine now, you know, because everything is consistently changing. So you, you have to change and the way you do things you have to change. And like you said, you have to be open-minded. You have to, you know, really, you know, adapt to change. And it's so important. Now, if people, you know, tell people about your services before you go, because I want people to know that how you could help others and where they can find you. Excellent. Thank you. So uh, as a leadership consultant, I have a couple of uh, offerings that I do. One is that personal one-on-one -on -one coaching that I think is is monumental, not just for, for juniors, but for seniors as well, to be in a space to say, hey, listen, I come from this small business world. I've had conversations with people who they've only managed no more than 20 people in smaller environments. And they're saying, I'm trying to transition to this larger aerospace company. You know, What does it take? What are they looking for? Here's what I have. 
let me know. And so that service of one-on-one, -on -one, always important. Uh, I'm available for those uh, conversations and getting people to where they need to be. That's that's so important. And then in group conversations, I've had groups of, you know, let's say not millennials or Gen X, but groups of people that were similar. And they say, mm -hmm. hey, listen, um, we uh, understand that you know, you you older guys or Gen X guys, there's something you guys are looking for. My my bosses are this way, or they think like you. How do I yeah. understand and navigate this, right? Because I, I think there's a there's a club that I don't understand. And I ran across a, a group of people, five or seven, and we have these group conversations. So that's something that I also offer. You don't have to know the other groups. <laughs> you can reach mm -hmm. out and I can put you with the groups. And then we can have those conversations on what the thought and the mentality is of various levels of leadership. So then they can understand where it's going. And then later, I'm hoping next year uh, to put this into a, a program myself, a leadership course that I've been mulling over and, and developing. And I think it's going to be important. So then they can see it on, on paper. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And tell everybody again what your website is called. Website. So it's www.sme media group llc.co so okay. it's uh i i have so th those are the consulting services but uh i also have in generating as with podcast information and writing the book so there's where the media comes in is that you know there, there's a medium that i'm exploring my leadership in i love it i love it well this has been amazing eric i thank you so much for being on the show this is you know it's it's so important because many people want to transition and they just don't understand what is involved how they should do it and you've given such great you know information today so i just want to thank you so much for you know taking the time out to provide this information because it's such a necessary component when you want to go from one one you know extre extreme to the next extreme and and so many people want to transition you hear, you hear people hear that word and they start to glow because many people have that dream of transitioning into that next level whatever their next level may be and they just don't know how and I like that you said that, you know, plateauing is okay because some people frown upon that. They're hard on themselves when they see a plateau, but that could give you time, like you said, to really, you know, take some time out to look things over, to kind of catch up with yourself and then, you know, create a plan on, on what's the next step. What's, you know, how do, you know, how do I get to that next goal and, and be able to transition, you know, gracefully. So sometimes, you know, not being so hard on ourselves, it, it, yeah. you know, can get us really far too. You're, you're exactly right. And we run across those. We've been that, right. Yeah. And so, uh, but looking forward, looking for that next hill, that's very important for us. Yes, definitely. So thank you so much, Eric, for being on the show. I really appreciate you and I can't wait to see you soon. So I look forward to our next conversation. Thank you, Stacey. You're very welcome. You have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.